Dual Ports project started in 2015 when the environmental issue were on top of the agenda for European ports, but the climate issues were not mentioned at that time. The Dual Ports project foresaw already both environment and climate when the project was founded. So you can say this was sign of the times. That we started out so early and made European ports ready to deal with what we now know. The target is to achieve at least 94% reduction in CO2 emission with the production of neutral energy with heat and to use the harbour's infrastructure to optimize its use of sustainable energy. We do this by collecting the power from the wind, waves and sun which is sent to a heat pump and electrical boiler providing heat to all households in the city of Vilsane without using fossil fuels. The heat project is, uh, is started when we bought uh, three wind turbines that generates three megawatt uh, of electrical energy. Uh, the next thing we did was that we connected an electrical boiler that uh, can consume up to 10 megawatt of electrical energy, so that fitted the wind turbines just perfect. The dual ports project shows that by utilizing the natural resources around us, ports can provide massive amounts of green energy to local households and industries. Uh, yes, this is David Hibbert from uh, Orkney Marine Services, uh, it's part of the Orkney Island Council. We have a number of uh, hydrogen projects uh, ongoing at the moment. Uh, one is soft and tough, another one is big hit. Uh, it's, these are both uh, ones uh, UK funded, the other one is funded from the European Union. We've been uh, in Orkney, we've been developing quite a lot of hydrogen projects. Uh, I'm standing here beside the, uh, the Surf and Turf fuel cell site in Kirtle Pier. And, and during this, this project, we joined dual ports. Uh, dual ports gave us uh, to move the, uh, the hydrogen from the, uh, the shore side you see here but to, uh, to develop a bunkering system for ships. Okay, we're down here at uh, Kirtle Pier uh, in front of one of our ferries here, the Earl Thorfinn. This vessel is used to transport hydrogen uh, from the North Isles of Orkney. Now, we joined Newell Ports uh, shortly after these projects became live and the um, Newell Ports was to de deliver a, a bunker system for actually moving the hydrogen fuel from land use and onto, uh, onto ship use. Uh, now things have developed furthermore in the, in the hydrogen that uh, we now uh, have two more projects, one of which is High Dime, one of, another one is High Seas 3, which actually will give us a real vessel uh, to fuel. So we need a, more than just a, a proposed hydrogen system for fueling ships, we actually need a, a real system to, uh, to physically fuel these new vessels which will be coming to, into service in two years time. Participating in dual ports with this pilot helps us to learn about lighting, to learn about intelligent lighting system, and low carbon lighting in general. In this pilot, a completely new lighting system will be installed on a track field you see behind me. 
The track field is being used for reload vehicles that are shipped to Great Britain as well as for shunting operation of other customers in the port. The primary objective for the, um, for the LNG pilot is uh, to uh, being able to extend the range of services provided from the port and thereby also um, being able to create uh, value-added services for the, uh, for the merchant marine and, and other um, vessels in the area so that they can be able to comply with their regulations that are already in force and uh, further um, regulations coming into force uh, via the IMO uh, organization uh, later on. We have solid indications from companies that are interested in investing in Port of Spain and conducting L&D operations in the future. And we also have interesting um, conversations with uh, companies that operate vessels in the area that could be interested in LNG. The pilot and the feasibility study conducted in the dual port program will help us to uh, clarify on whether this is one of the business areas that we need to move into in the coming future. Heliorec transforms unused water space into home of clean energy. We build floating solar power plants in the most cost and eco-efficient way, especially for near shore locations where half of global population live. Our system makes clean energy and it, it will not depend on the grid, so it can be an independent energy source for this type of buildings. Surface-projektet på Skagenhavn går ud på at lægge en bæredygtig asfalt. Den asfalt, der bliver lagt, er en CO2-reduceret asfalt. Oven på asfalten bliver der lagt et granulat, som aktivt fjerner NOX og SOX. I det aktive lag er der bundet titaniumoxid, og den reagerer med NOX, så det bliver omdannet til nitrat eller salte og bliver og vil forsvinde, med, når det regner. Vi gik ind i, i dual ports for, for at blive mere bæredygtig havner, for at, at se, hvordan vi kunne samarbejde med andre havne om at, at skabe grønne alternativer. Fordelen ved at være med i et EU-projekt er, at vi, vi får adgang til nogle midler, som, som gør, at vi kan teste, teste ny teknologi, som, som vi ellers ikke ville teste. We have worked on a low carbon harbor plan and that plan is the basis for our dual port uh, pilot low carbon harbor plan. Uh, in that plan there are a few uh, measures uh, that we can take to make the ports more sustainable. Uh, one of them is solar cells. So this company has uh, put solar cells on the roof of his company to make the energy more self-sufficient. Uh, that kind of measures we want to take all over the port. And it's not only solar cells, but can be wind energy, LNG, uh, uh, water, uh, uh, kind of water measures that we're going to take, so that the whole port in Zwollekamp and Meppel as a whole will be more uh, sustainable and more CO2 uh, neutral. I just wanted to make a point that we were discussing on there a moment ago about the uh, what can be done right now story about big deep sea ships. You are a special group of people who have chosen to be a part of a workshop that looks at true and absolute zero. And I'm here today to talk to you about the technology of a liquid hydrogen fuel gas supply system. We know that we have the technology to achieve true zero within certain, at a certain level within certain operating profiles.
We are now on the, at the port of Warringborg. It's a small uh, industrial port in the south uh, side of uh, Zealand. The port of Warringborg says uh, a possibility of growth. Uh, besides that, the port wants to be a green port. Uh, so that means that we want to expand the port in a sustainable way. Behind me you can see uh, phase two of our port expansion, where we uh, want to recycle uh, about 100,000 tons of uh, soil, contaminated soil and uh, ashes. And the reason why we are uh, in the dual port project is uh, both because we want to uh, expand the port on a sustainable way and we also want to be a more greener port. Uh, and the dual port project, the Interact project, gave us the possibility to uh, uh, come with our projects uh, which matches this uh, criteria for the dual port project. Since we have started in 2014, uh, we have uh, had three port expansions. We are now working on a fourth port expansion, also based on recovery of soil and industrial residues. Um, the last expansion uh, will uh, be uh, ready in a, in a couple of years of time, and then uh, the, old, the port will be eight times bigger than we started in uh, 2014. It was very important for the port uh, to have the possibility to prove that recovery of soil could bring down your uh, cost for building a, a port expansion by 10 to 20 percent. Uh, and that has been proved in this, the, the first three stages of the port expansion. In the fourth port expansion, we can finance the expansion 100 percent by uh, recovery of soil and residues. Besides that, there is also uh, a carbon footprint we can uh, make much lower uh, by more than 20 percent. The port of Emden is uh, the most western port uh, in northern Germany and uh, we are partners within dual ports and responsible for two pilots. Um, it's the Green Port Officer where we are about to develop strategies uh, for a, a green uh, development of ports um, and, and the lighting project where we um, are about to install an innovative sustainable lighting system in our port. The Green Port Officer pilot um, is about in introducing a sustainability management system within uh, the port uh, of Emden and all the ports of Niedersachsen ports um, in order to pave, uh, to pave the way for a sustainable development of ports. We have some projects that are, tr that are triggered already that pay into the strategy. It's for example um, the refurbishment of the lighting systems uh, in our ports. So replace the old, uh, outdated natrium viper lamps through energy saving LED lamps in our locks, in our offices or warehouses. Another task of the Green Port Officer is about sustainability communication, like to make sure that all of our employees know what sustainability is and how, um, how urgent uh, the issue is about sustainability. To raise awareness uh, among our employees and to share the knowledge that we have gained with our partners and with our clients in order to, uh, yeah, to go uh, uh, together the way uh, of reducing carbon emissions in ports. has been a major success and have by far proved that ports play a vital role in the green transition. The project turned out to be a frontrunner in creating green and climate-friendly solutions in ports around the European Union. The key results clearly support the goals years ago. We can make ports more sustainable and greener by reducing costs and reducing the carbon footprint. The results obtained by the different pilots in the dual ports project are very promising. We obtained an overall result of 23% reduction of costs and a carbon emission reduction of more than 80%, what is a huge performance.